Dennis Day is brought to you by Colgate Dental Cream and Luster Cream Shampoo. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, dream girl hair. The Dennis Day Show with Barbara Eiler, B. Benaderet, Dink Trapp, John Brown, Charles Dant in the orchestra, and yours truly, Vern Smith, is written by Frank Galen and stars our popular young singer in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Here's Dennis to sing I'll Dance at Your Wedding. You'll soon be walking down the aisle with someone by your side. The bells will ring, the choir will sing, the groom will kiss the bride. Oh, what a day that's gonna be, they'll come from everywhere. And when they play, oh, promise me, I promise I'll be there. I'll dance at your wedding, I'll dance at your wedding, I'll dance at your wedding, I'll have a wonderful time. I'll drink to your father, I'll drink to your mother, then I'll have another for all lying time. I'll sit for the ladies, the young and old, and then I'll have myself another drink and kiss them all again. I'll dance at your wedding, I won't miss that wedding. I'll dance at your wedding, am I gonna shine at your wedding and mine? I'll drink to your father, I'll drink to your mother. Then I'll have another for all laughing time. I'll kiss all the ladies, the young and old, and then I'll have myself another drink and kiss them all again. I'll dance at your wedding. I won't miss that wedding. I'll dance at your wedding. Am I gonna shine at your wedding and mine? Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. No other toothpaste does a better job of cleaning teeth than Colgate Dental Cream. For Colgate Dental Cream has a safe polishing agent that cleans your teeth both gently and thoroughly. Brings out their natural sparkle and beauty. You can actually see and feel the difference. And scientific tests prove that Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Yes, actual scientific tests prove conclusively that in 7 out of 10 cases... Colgate's instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. Nationwide tests of leading toothpastes prove that Colgate's is preferred for flavor over every other brand tested. Yes, preferred over every other brand tested. And no wonder, for Colgate Dental Cream is the result of constant effort to produce the finest toothpaste in the world today. For cleaning teeth, for flavor, for sweetening breath. So see if you don't agree with the millions who have made Colgate Dental Cream America's favorite toothpaste. Try Colgate Dental Cream to bring out the natural sparkle and beauty of your teeth for a wake-up flavor you'll thoroughly enjoy. And always use Colgate Dental Cream after you eat and before every date to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Well, one of the pleasant things about Christmas shopping is the pause for refreshment afterwards. And in Weaverville, the favorite spot for that is a recently opened little place featuring a gypsy fortune teller and called, with great originality, the Little Gypsy Tea Room. We find a familiar trio occupying one of the tables this afternoon. There's Herbert Anderson, his daughter Mildred, and our young hero, Dennis Day, all waiting for the gypsy to unveil to them the mysteries of the future. Gee, it's sure swell of you to take Mildred and me out to tea, Mr. Anderson. Oh, well, we only live once, my boy. (laughs) I'm glad you're enjoying yourselves. Oh, we are, Daddy. But how did you ever manage to get the money for it? Well, I... I'm afraid I did something a little unethical. Uh, I promise you won't tell. Oh, of course we won't. But what did you do? I got up earlier than Poopsie this morning and went through my pants pockets. (laughs) Gee, I bet you here after she keeps the money in her own (laughs) pants. Oh, I 
forgot they have no pockets. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did it, Daddy. Golly, I can't wait to hear our fortunes. Can you, Dennis? Well, gosh, I don't know. I'm a little scared of what you'll tell me. Well, why? Have you had your fortune told before? Yeah, I dropped a penny in a scale one day, and a card came out saying, you weigh 153. Now turn over this card and read your future. And what was on the back of the card? Just one word. Boy. <laughs> Silly sidewalk scale. Princess Romagna's a real gypsy. She knows the truth. Uh, look, she's free now, Dennis. Call her over. Okay. You, Princess Romagna, over here, please. How do you do? <laughs> uh, you are desirous of consulting with the gypsy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> We'd like our fortunes told, Princess. Certainly, dearie. Uh, would you like just your immediate future, or can I interest you in something from the cradle to the grave? <laughs> well, whatever you see in our tea leaves. All right. Uh, let's have your cup, dearie. Oh, my, I seem to see a man in your life. Is that correct? Oh, yes, it is. He's dark, handsome, very distinguished looking, and terribly intelligent. Oh, isn't she wonderful, Dennis? What's so wonderful? She was looking right at me. <laughs> Gypsy, are we going to be married someday? Yeah. And look, do you see the four little specks of tea leaves at the side of the cup? That means you're going to have four children. Uh, pardon me, but one of those little specks is a fly. <laughs> uh, okay, so one of the children will be born in an aeroplane. <laughs> oh, isn't that romantic? Now, you, Daddy. Uh, but I wasn't drinking tea, Mildred. All I had was a cup of coffee and a cigar. Oh, well, that's okay. I do just as well with the issues. <laughs> Flick a few toward Mecca. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I don't want to know my future. I'm content to just let my little poopsie push me toward it. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, let's have your cup, Sonny. Oh, yes, ma'am. Here you are. Thank you. Let's see now. Oh, my, what's this? The leaf says there's going to be a big change in your life. Gosh, really? Yeah, and soon. Maybe even this very day. Or tomorrow. Oh, Dennis, isn't that marvelous? Boy, I'll say. Are you sure, Gypsy? Positive. Kismet is about to take a hint. Gosh, and I never even met the fellow. <laughs> that kismet means fate, sir. Oh, uh, can you see any more in the leaves, Gypsy? Can you tell me what I'm going to... Uh, Sorry, but that is all the leaves reveal, Sonny. And now I have other customers, so if you'll kindly cross my palm. Uh, yes, yes, of course, Gypsy. I have some silver right here to cross it with. Silver? Look, let's get all the way across, shall we, with some of that stuff that bends? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, well, here you are now. Thank you, Princess. Shalom Aleichem, I'm sure. <laughs> Goodbye. Gosh, just think my whole life's going to be changed. I may even have a completely new personality, huh? Well, it's possible, I guess. Boy, come on. I can hardly wait for tonight to come so I can go to bed and wake up in the morning and meet myself. <laughs> oh, boy, what a wonderful time we had. That was really something. Well, so you finally got home. Oh, hi, Mother. Oh, evening, Mrs. Anderson. Hello, Butterball. <laughs> oh, Mother, we had the most... That wonderful... can wait, Mildred. You and your father step outside for a moment. I have a few words to say to this young man here. Alone. Me? Yes, you. We'll see you later, Dennis. Come on, Daddy. Mildred, if Kismet shows up, show... send him right in. I think I'm going to need him. <laughs> Dennis, I'll come right to the point. Do you know that my patience with you is exhausted... Well, I knew that in my case it tired very quickly, but what have I done lately? Are you aware that your room rent is two weeks overdue? Oh, yes, ma'am. I realized it last night when I noticed that my bed was missing. <laughs> Dennis, I've strung along with you in the past because I hoped you'd change. Yes, ma'am, I know. But look at you. The same $8 a week job. The same miserable prospects. The same lame excuses about the rent for two years. You're even wearing the same sweatshirt you wore the day you came here. 
Is there anything to recommend you? Not unless you admire consistency. <laughs> well, I don't. I want my $12 or out you go. But gee, Mrs. Anderson, how can you feel that way? It's almost Christmas time. The very air in this house should be filled with the Christmas spirit. Well? I can breathe it for $12, huh? <laughs> exactly. And you have heard my last word on the subject. Well, well. So this is kismet. Gee, I can't wait for the next wonderful change in my life. I wonder what it'll be. Appendicitis or athlete's foot? <laughs> you, Dennis? Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Willoughby. Good morning. I've been waiting for you, son. I have something to tell you. And it's rather big news, my boy. Big news? You mean, is it... Is it something that will change my whole life, is it? It's just that, my boy. Kismet, at last! At last! Eh? Quick, what is it? Tell me the glorious news. Quick, quick, quick! <laughs> well, starting Monday morning, you'll be out of a job. That's right. I'm selling the store, son, so of course I'll have to let you go. How could that kismet turn out to be such a stinker? <laughs> I'm sorry, son, but you know I've always wanted a ranch out west. And now that I've found a rich young sucker to buy the store, I can have one at last. Oh, I see. Well, Mr. Willoughby, this new owner, couldn't you recommend that he keep me on here? Dennis, he's a member of my lodge. I couldn't do that to a fellow bald eagle. <laughs> Oh, besides, he's giving me $8,000 for this place. That's enough of a beating. Gosh, $8,000? Yes, exactly the price of the ranch I'm buying. Of course, I, I did want another place at 12000 but unfortunately, the bank turned down my application for a loan. Your credit is no good? Well, as a storekeeper, yes, but not as a rancher. They said unless I had someone in with me who knew all about ranching, they... Hey. What? Son, how would you like to be my brother Clarence? I think I'd hate it. I mean just long enough to go over to the bank and tell them that you're my brother from out west That you know all about cattle ranching and that you're going to run my place for me Then they'll give me the money for the ranch I really want But Mr. Willoughby, isn't that a little sneaky? Certainly not, I'll pay back the loan Do you think they call me Honest Homer Willoughby for nothing? Yes, sir <laughs> Well, they don't now, look, Dennis, if you can put this over for me, I'll see that the new owner keeps you on. Gee, do you mean it? I do. And what's more, you'll get a $5 raise. $5? Boy, you spend other people's money like it was other people's money, don't you? <laughs> well, naturally. Now, run over to that costume place and get yourself a Western outfit and a handlebar mustache. Then hop right down to the bank and get to work on Mr. Courtney, okay? Yeah, I guess I haven't got much choice. Fine. And remember, you're no longer Dennis Day. I'm not? Of course not. You're my brother Clarence. Oh, that's right. Gee, I hope when Kismet comes up with my permanent change, I'll come from a better family. Yes? Mr. Willoughby to see me? No, tell him I... Hmm? Oh, his brother. All right, Miss Flood, have him come in. That's funny. I didn't know Willoughby. Was. <laughs> well, I suppose I might as well see him. Come in. Howdy there, partner. I'm from the land of the Golden West, out way yonder there. <laughs> Willoughby's my handle, Saddle Sore Willoughby of the B-Bar H. You don't say. I sure do, partner. What say we hunker down by the farm, flavor spell, he? Well, I have no far, but you can hunker down in that chair if you get it. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find it comfortable. Thank you. Ah, you're right. This is darn good hunkering. <laughs> good. Now, what's on your mind, Mr. Willoughby? Well, it's about my brother Homer's loan, partner. Guess he didn't tell you I was going to run his ranch for him, hey? He never even told me he had a brother, much less one that knew ranching. Why didn't he say something about it yesterday? Settle back, son. I'm ready for that one. You see, he never knew until today that he had a brother. What? 
Weren't you raised together? Sure, but you know how close-mouthed us Western folks are. Ma just never told them who I was. <laughs> occur to him to ask her. Us Willoughby's ain't the nosy kind, Bob. I find that story very hard to believe, Mr. Willoughby. Well, give it everything you got, partner. It's the best I can do. <laughs> so you claim to be an experienced cattle rancher, eh? You bet. Been a raising and a selling cattle since I was born. My pa had the biggest cattle ranch in all of Wyoming. Oh? How many head did he have? Why, one, of course, same as me. <laughs> I'm talking about heads of cattle. Oh. How many did he sell in an average year? Oh, he didn't sell them that way, son. You had to take the whole animal, feet and everything. <laughs> Look, a saddle sore. When we speak of a head of cattle, we're talking about the entire animal. You don't say. It's a fact. Now, how many head of cattle did your father have on this ranch of his? Oh, shucks, partner. I never could count them. We had about a thousand cows and as many calves. And how many bulls? None. We figured bulls was too vicious, so all we had was cows. <laughs> well, that's not a bad trick if you can work it. <laughs> you need, huh? No, but I don't think you can. No, brother, are you a faker? Hold on there, partner. Smile when you say that or I'll stick you good with my cowpoke. With your... With your cowpoke? <laughs> oh, this is murder. <laughs> I said smile, partner. I didn't tell you to milk it. <laughs> Wonderful, friend, you really are. Now, will you be good enough to tell me what this is all about? Well, to te tell the truth, Mr. Courtney, I'm Dennis Day, see? Well, by George, so you are. That, that mustache... Has... Yes, sir, it was Mr. Willoughby's idea. See, he's pretty desperate for that loan, and he thought it would like him... Oh, excuse him... me. Yes? My wife's nephew. Confound my wife's nephew. Tell him I'm out. Tell him I'm busy. Tell him I'll see him tonight at the house. My wife's relatives, every time I draw a breath, there's more of them on my neck. Her mother in one room, her sister in another, and her two cousins in a third. Gee. A man's home is supposed to be his castle. You know what my wife has done to mine? It looks like she's lowered the drawbridge too often. <laughs> yes, and now her nephew and his wife. And this morning, he asked me to recommend an obstetrician. You know what that means. No, sir. An obstetrician is a baby doctor. Gee, maybe they're going to have, if you'll pardon the expression, a baby. <laughs> Of course they are, drat it. But why do they have to come here and live with me? Oh, what I wouldn't give if they'd moved to another town. Yeah, I guess you... Hey, what would you give? Huh? Well, supposing I went to this nephew of yours and told him I was the doctor you recommended. If I could convince him that Weaverville was a terrible place to have babies, he'd move, wouldn't he? Why, by golly, young man, you have brains. It does seem that way for the moment, doesn't it? <laughs> Yes, and you're right. He would move, but fast. Sure. And as a return favor, you'd agree to loan Mr. Willoughby and me $4,012 in cash. Well, why the $12? Well, it's sort of a down payment. I'd like to lie down again. <laughs> is it a deal? Well, all right. I guess so. Here's my nephew's address. His name is Prentice. Now, don't forget, you're a baby doctor. Okay. Gee, first a store clerk, then a rancher, then a baby doctor. That kismet sure is a busy little guy. <laughs> Did you wish to see someone? How do you do? I am Dr. Rittenhouse, Vice Captain and Fool, Himmelschlager from way down Dorton there in Vienna there, Dorton, if you please. Oh, you must be the doctor my uncle recommended. Uh, the very same. Now, I understand that, uh, well, or rather you, your wife, well, the both of you are... Uh, We're expecting a baby. I'm almost certain that's what you'll get. <laughs> I hope so. Now then, where are you planning to raise this baby? Where? Why, right here, of course. In Weaverville? Why, sure. Ach, du lieber, hat mir nicht kein Scheine. I don't understand, Doc. Is there something wrong with that? My dear friend, 
You want a fine bouncing baby, is that not so? That's not possible here. In Viviville, they are just lying flat. <laughs> Golly. I'm telling you, we got diseases here no one else ever even heard of. Did you ever hear of the Weaverville creep? The Weaverville creep? Every kid in Weaverville gets it. My gosh. What is it? What does it do to them? For a year after they're born, they can't walk. <laughs> no. Not only that, but when they get to be about eight years old, all their teeth fall out. Uh, go on forever, but maybe you'd rather not hear it. Maybe you've already decided to move your little family away from here, yeah? Well, no. I... In that case, I continue. No. <laughs> Suppose that you are a very lucky man who manages to bring up a baby who is healthy. Do you realize that in this town also grow the meanest kids in ganze Welt for stoppen the right for looking? one of them. You, we got to spank them the minute they're born. <laughs> My goodness. Ah, and the delinquency here. 95% of the children in this town are juvenile delinquents, and the other 5% shoot pool. <laughs> well, doesn't the town council do anything about all this juvenile delinquency? The town council? Why should they worry? They're too busy putting through laws to make it illegal to put anything but saloons on street corners. <laughs> But uh, what about the drug stores? They have all been forced to go underground. But suppose someone was sick and needed medicine in the middle of the night. They would have to eat pretzels with it. <laughs> Good gracious. I'm beginning to wonder now if this is the right town to raise my baby in. It's about time my boat was getting pretty near shut. <laughs> you know, Doc, I think you're right. Gwendolyn and I are packing tonight. We're leaving this town the first thing in the morning. Good. Say, did I tell you how much calcium we got in the water here? Every kid in town is a bonehead. You better leave. <laughs> well, I already said we were going to. Oh, yeah, I know, but I already had that line thrown up, so I figured I might as well say it. Well, I'll be there then, Dunka. <laughs> Mr. Willoughby, Kismet, I did it, Kismet. What? You're in, Mr. Willoughby, and all because of me. Oh, I'm grand, I tell you, grand. <laughs> Dennis, you may kiss me on the cheek if you wish. Kiss you? Sure, pretend you're a Frenchman. Go ahead, have fun. <laughs> now look, Dennis. Oh, I know. You haven't heard from Mr. Corton yet. But wait till I tell you the news. You'll cheer. What news? Well, I've gotten you the loan for that ranch you wanted. This is a cheer. Dennis, maybe it's you who should hear the news. You see, my buyer backed out. He phoned a little while ago to tell me the deal was off, and he was coming back to pick up his deposit. Oh, my gosh. Then that means I'm still your employee? Don't rub it in. It's tough on both of us. <laughs> and what about my $5 raise? Now, there's a silly question if I ever heard one. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's too bad it blew up like this, Dennis, but I don't... Uh-oh, here comes that ex-buyer of mine. Mr. Willoughby, not that fellow crossing the sidewalk. It can't be. What? Why, of course it is. Oh, no, Kismet, no. Hello, Mr. Willoughby. Here I am for my deposit. Oh, hello, Doc. The gate. <laughs> Doc? Who are you calling Doc? Why, this gentleman right here. He's the one who advised me to leave town. <laughs> What? Oh, sure. And luckily, I found a store in Middletown I like even... Dennis, than... then! Why, you... You... Mr. Willoughby, no. Be careful. Your blood vessels will spring leaks. <laughs> Dennis, say when I'm through with you, your own mother won't recognize you. Holy smoke. Is this the change I've been waiting for? If I ever get my hands on that kismet, I'll murder the bum. <laughs> Dennis Day will be back in just one minute to sing and Mimi. But first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Hair that gleams and glistens from a luster cream shampoo. Hair bright, washed right, easy to do and dress right. Hair that's soft and silky from... 
a luster cream shampoo. Yes, luster cream shampoo leaves hair with new three-way loveliness, fragrantly clean, glistening with sheen, soft and easy to manage. Be a dream girl, a lovely luster cream girl. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. With Charles Dant in the orchestra, Dennis returns to our microphone to sing... And Mimi. On the Rue de la Paix, there was once a cabaret and Mimi. As the night went along, there was suddenly a song and Mimi. All the world seemed to say, that they love the cabaret and Mimi. But I knew that when she'd see me, Mimi sang for me alone. Came in a passion, with a passion for dancing with the one that I adore. And for me, she's singing no more. On the road and a fair, there was once a cabaret and Mimi. Now I'm sitting sad and dreamy, just for Mimi and her song. Remember, doctors prove the palm olive plan brings two out of three women lovelier complexions in 14 days. And this beauty plan with palm olive soap was tested on women with all types of skin. Dry, oily, even skin that was not clear. Yes, 36 doctors proved the 14-day palm olive plan improves all types of skin. Brings fresher, brighter, younger looking complexions. So get palm olive soap and start your 14-day palm olive plan now. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.